I'm starting off with a Drupal 8 project open in VS Code, but you can follow along in any code editor. In Drupal 8, you can add custom or contrib themes to the themes directory. And right now, there's nothing in there. All the themes that ship with Drupal 8 are located in the core directory, and like everything else in Drupal core, we don't want to touch those. Instead, I'm going to create my own folder in themes, and I'm going to call it custom. This isn't required, but it will help me organize my themes. In some projects, you may see a contrib folder in here, which is great for themes that are downloaded from drupal.org. Now that I've created my custom folder, I'm going to create another folder for my new theme. I'm going to call it Netflix theme, and that's just a play on the Netflix name. It's just for pretend. The name of the folder must be all lowercase, start with a letter, and use an underscore instead of spaces. The very first file you will create for your theme will be the theme info file. And as far as Drupal is concerned, technically this is the only file you need. The naming and placement of this file is very important. It must be named the same as the theme directory. For example, Netflix theme one or Netflix theme dev is not going to work. This follows the same naming convention as the theme folder. The first thing the info file does is tells Drupal that the theme exists. Then it provides information about the theme. So I'm going to add some basic information about the theme. The info file is a YAML file, and it reads this as a key value pair. For example, name is the key and Netflix theme is the value. YAML is very picky about spacing, and it does not like tabs. If you are new to YAML, you can follow the documentation, or a quick Google search for YAML docs will do the trick. Also, if you do like using tabs, you can configure your code editor to convert tabs into spaces to make YAML happy. Some of the basic values we can add to the info file are name, and this is a human readable name of your theme, the type, keep in mind module files also use YAML files. So we are telling Drupal, this is a theme and not a module, a description of your theme, and what version of core we are using. The last thing I've added here is what base theme we want to use. This could be a core theme, a contrib theme, or even another custom theme. Typically, when a theme is fully developed, you will see a lot more values in here. You can check out all the available values in the theming guide on drupal.org. Now that we have our info file, Drupal can see we have a theme and we can enable it. So let's go to our Drupal site, and before we do anything, let's clear our caches and turn off app aggregation. So let's go to configuration and performance. And we only want to turn this off during development because it's going to help us not need to clear caches so much. But on a production site, you'll want this turned on. All right, now that we've cleared our caches, let's enable our theme. So we can do that by going to appearance and we can install and set as default. So let's check out our theme. And since our theme doesn't do anything yet, this is exactly what I want to see. So typically we want to do more than just create an info file. I'm not going to go full in depth into creating a theme manually because I prefer to use a theme generator to do all this heavy lifting for me. But I would like to at least demonstrate how to at least start adding some styles. So to do that, we're going to go back to our code editor and we're going to create another file. It's going to be called Netflix theme dot libraries dot yaml and here we are telling drupal we have a library we want to use drupal uses libraries to attach css and js to a theme so what i what i'm doing here is i'm creating a library called global i can call it anything and typically you'll see quite a few libraries in here what i am telling drupal is that in my global library i have a css file called global.css in my css directory so there are a few steps left. First, we need to tell our info file about this library we just made. Let's go to our info file and tell it we would like to use a library called global. Again, spacing is very important. Make sure you use two spaces to indent. We are telling Drupal we want to use the library global, global and that is listed in our net, Netflix theme. The second part is this won't do anything because we haven't 
defined a global CSS file yet or a CSS folder for that matter. So let's create our CSS folder and create a global.css. And I'm going to make a very small change just to demonstrate that Drupal can now see this file. And I'm going to refresh the page. So this is great to demonstrate how to get started and make simple changes, but creating a custom theme can be much more complex. We have quite a bit more work to get set up with best practices. For example, we should be using components, and I'd really like to use SAS instead of CSS. So for the remainder of this series, I'm going to use the theme generator to do all this heavy lifting for me.